Okay, we're in section 18 of the notes and we're talking about the SAGE code, all right? SAGE is a computer algebra system. We're trying to introduce you to this uh, slowly but surely. <coughs> Excuse me, you'll start to learn some of the uh, ways to interact with SAGE. Um, I'm of the opinion that I probably shouldn't memorize too much, but um, you know, the bottom line is when you get into more advanced courses, you, you're gonna probably have to look up things to figure out how to do things, all right? Now, of course, we're giving you um, this code over here so you could try it out. Uh, again, not to memorize, not to be tested on, and not to be using it on homework, all right? But you're gonna experiment with this. And, and why do you wanna do that? So when you go forward, you are gonna be familiar with what other students are getting at other schools, all right? Like for example, at NGIT, those students have been introduced to a computer algebra system probably from day one for most of the students. If not, some of these students have actually had seen it in high school, all right? Or even in middle school, by the way. So I'm gonna say, this is a good idea just to get introduced, but don't overwhelm yourself. Right. Don't if you're going to overwhelm yourself, overwhelm yourself with the homeworks that we've been giving you. And that's something that you really need to spend time and effort on with paper and pencil. So I'm going to go to um, um, not to the website. That's for students that want to do that. That's the low bar. And the reason for that, <clears throat> it's easy to use. You go there, go to the co-calc and just simply do it. All right. I'm going to use a terminal and let me go to the terminal first. Right. Let me close this window out, it's in the way. And I'm just gonna type things in. So reset, and we've been doing this all along. So I like to start my session with reset, basically clearing out any kind of memory or leftover crap that's in the system. So, you know, I'm gonna emphasize that what we're doing over here, and we've derived these before, you know, how do we derive them by hand? And it's important you know how to derive them. And the reason for that is, I don't think you should be memorizing too many things. But what are we going to say? Differentiate the arc sine with respect to x, All right? So we we actually derived that formula. Now someone says, "Oh, it looks different than what's in the notes." Not substantially so. In the notes, I probably have one over the root of one minus x squared, but it's not substantially different. So if I type in differentiate, you know, arc, let's see, arc cosine, right? We've done that one as well, and it looks remarkably like the derivative of arc sine. Let's do that. And you know what it is? It's just the opposite, all right, of the derivative of the arc sine. Okay, so other ones we did not derive. <clears throat> well, let's do differentiate uh, the, um, let's see, what are we doing here? We're differentiating the arc cosecant. Yeah, let's try that. Now let's do arc tan with respect to x expect that we get what we expected. All right, now we did not derive the other three. And what do you mean the other three? You know, arc uh, cotangent, arc cosecant, and arc secant. And I think the main reason for it is that <clears throat> their invertible regions are not well agreed upon, but you could. <clears throat> You'd have to get the invertible region for it though to do that, all right? A little more complicated, but the bottom line that you realize these are built into the system. You can do them, let's do that, differentiate. Let's do one that's not there. Let's see. No, they're all there. Let's do our cotangent. With respect to X. All right. Again, you probably see a relationship between the derivative of our cotangent and uh, arc tangent. All right. So let's go, you know, for a different thing. And this is something that I so said we've seen differentiation before. We've seen plotting before. But I've not seen this before, which says aspect ratio is true. I want to tell you what this is communicating to me, that the x and the y-axis, the, the ordinate and the abscissa, are going to have the same scale. That is the distance between you know, uh, you know, 0 and 1 on the x-axis would be identical to the distance between 0 and 1 on the y-axis. What this is going to do is launch um, another application that's going to display that. So, you know, kind of looking at it, <coughs> what do I see? I see this blue curve. What's the blue curve? Uh, let's take a look at that. And, you know, I, I don't really like the scale of it, but it, it's not bad. And I'm going to say that the blue curve is, well, that's between, let's see, what is that between minus one and one? I certainly want it better than that, but I let the, we'll, we'll, we'll refine that in a second. That's going to be the sine function. And what's this other guy over here? 
That's the arc sine function. So I'm gonna go back to my, um, my thing and I wanna see if I can change something on this. So I'm gonna say X min equals minus pi over two and X max equals pi over two. All right, let's just do that. Again, we're learning and I see it now. All right, I'm seeing a better picture of it. Again, I'm gonna change something else on it. And just give me a second over here. I'm gonna change the y min to, let's see, minus pi over two and the y max pi over two. Let's take a look at it. So I'm seeing it. And what am I seeing over here? I'm seeing the this the sine function drawn down there, and I'm seeing the arc sine function drawn down. The sine is in the blue, whoops, and the arc sine is in the green. All right. Let's do another one. And I'm gonna, you know put this down. This has something to do with the problem set that we've been doing, or you've been trying to do at least. What is that? It, it takes a derivative of, you know, uh, of a function f of x equals the square root of six minus x squared plus the arc sine of five x with respect to x. And I want to, you know, maybe do this one over here. And that's full simplify. I think in the past we've been only using simplify. Now it's full simplify. And, you know, if I do full simplify, let's take a look, you get this over here. I wanna look back over the um, work though. And I wanna see if, um, well, not forward, I wanna go backwards, sorry about that. I wanna see if I see these problems over here. And, and, and I realized for a lot of students, it's, I don't wanna look back over this. That's what most of your education is gonna be is looking back over older material to seeing how it relates to what you're, what you're learning. All right, and that's part of study. You look back over the material and I know looking back over can be very difficult, but we, we want to encourage it. So I'm starting to see one that's related to that uh, derivative of the arc tangent. Uh, and I'll pull this on the side so it'll be easier for you to see that. But I, I want the derivative of, you know, this says five plus t over five minus t. What did I do? Well, since I only defined the, um, the variable x in this, in this uh, problem uh, set, at least I believe I did, if, if not, x is always defined as a variable in Sage. You could do this over here, and let me just put this down. T is a variable. And I could differentiate. And this is very similar to the other problem we just did. Arc tan. I realize what some students are saying is, if Sage can do it, do I need to learn to do this? Yes, you need to learn how to do this. And the main reason by it is you're never going to get to a computer algebra system unless you can do this by hand. When I mean do this, do simple things by hand, because using a, uh, a computer algebra system to do something simple is really unproductive. All right, I'm going to differentiate with respect to t now. And what do I get? I get something that looks pretty complicated. And I'm going to just do that full simplify. So dot full simplify. And let's see what we get. And what do we get? We get the answer they got, which is five divided by, you know, T squared plus 25. They might write it slightly different, but that doesn't matter to me. It, you write the way you like to write it. It's an equivalent statement. All right, I'm gonna scroll back over it. I wanna see if I see this derivative of, oh, look at that right there, I believe. And, um, and let's take a look. And, and someone says, what are you looking at? Let me just clear the screen for you. And I wanna tell you what I'm looking at. I'm just using my cursor to go backwards. And I'm looking at this over here, all right? So differentiate, you know, this guy over here, all right? Square root of six minus X squared plus the arc sine. Again, what are we doing? We're just learning how to use Sage, right? Not that this is useful. It's not at this point because this is something I should be able to do by hand, but I'll just type that in there. And what do we get? Well, if you look at it, we're getting the same answer. Minus X over the square root of six minus X squared, I see that plus five over the square root of one uh, minus 25 X squared. Now, again, some of you say, oh, they're written in different order. 
No, it's not that different. It's really the same answer, right? Know, know that though when you're looking at these things over here. All right, again, a short introduction to using Sage. Thank you.